Hello, in this series we're looking at making low poly landscapes and low poly work. This course is part of a much bigger course where you can go from beginner right through to advanced. Check that out on gabbit.co.uk. Also, if you need to discuss and chat and work through problems, then you can try out the Discord server. You can chat to people like myself and there's lots of other helpful people on there as well. And lastly, if you want to support me, I've got a Patreon account and all these links are in the description. Okay, so next I'm going to create the factory and we'll learn about Boolean operations here. So let's start with a cube, shift A and then cube, and I'll just scale this into a shape that I like. So that's going to be my factory shape. In fact, if that's my water tower, let's make it nice and big to about here. Okay, so if I look at factories, there's an old factory there, and it's got these sort of triangular roofs. That's quite iconic of factories. And it's quite good to go with iconic shapes, and obviously these pipes coming out as well. So we'll do a bit of that. Let's go back to Blender. So let's go into edit mode. Control R and do a loop cut and I'll do three ridges. There we go. So Control R for loop cut and use your mouse wheel for the amount of loop cuts. So now this is a bit more awkward because if I grab an edge and pull it up, it's fine for that one. But what do I do with this one? It just pulls that up as well. So what we actually need to do is extrude these. So I need to extrude the faces first. So Control Tab, Faces, select each of these faces, Extrude Individual. And there we go. There I'm extruding them up by pulling my mouse. And then I'll go into edge mode, select this edge. Oh, that's the wrong one. I want to select that one. And if I press G to grab or grab it in the Z axis, it will go through the other polys and create a real mess. So undo that. So what I can do is press double G and it will edge slide down and snap to the bottom. Select this one, GG, snap to the bottom. This one, GG, snap to the bottom. And I'll get this one the same size. So I can select the other one first. So orthographic mode into side view and make sure they're the same height there we go and I think they need to be a tiny bit lower there we go the only problem with this method of edge sliding is that if I go to the vertex now I've actually got two vertices in here you can see that's the extra vertices so what I need to do is select everything and press remove doubles you have to be in edit mode for that and you have to have the vertices selected and it's removed six so that's one two three four five six that it's removed so that's worked so the next thing to do is to add some windows. So if I click down here, Shift A, Mesh Cube, scale it down, scale it in the X. That's a nice, quick, easy way to add a window. Yes, it's not indented, but it's very fast. I'll just make it a wide window as well. There we go. Shift D to duplicate, and I've got three windows with another duplicate there. Space them out a bit better. But actually, if you want to do it properly, you could create what's called a boolean operation so you dig them into your shape slightly and then that's going to cut these out from this one the best way to do this I've found let's just select one of them uh, is not to use the boolean tools in the modifiers here I found the bool tools add-on much more helpful so if you go up to file user preferences add-ons and then type in bool it will come up with the bool tools just there tick that save user settings and now I've got this bool tools thing under the tools panel bool tools if I click on this and remember whatever you select last is the active object so that's what the boolean is going to happen to so because I've selected this first then the big object last and press difference it cuts it out I can also select both of these and then the big object last and press difference and it'll cut them both out as well the thing to bear in mind though is that it does create unusual topology as you can see here so if I wanted another bit to my factory sticking out here and I wanted to do a loop cut with Control R, it's a bit more tricky and there's no loop coming through here. So it's not a great way of modeling because of the bad topology, but it's fine if you're using very flat surfaces like we do in low poly work. So if I now wanted to extrude this out and I've got another bit to my factory then and I can put a pipe up there or a chimney I should say up there and that will work great. And of course I can go in add a material to this this object so add a new material and we'll make that a sort of factory bricky color nice brown sludge color and we'll add another material id and this is going to be the windows make that a bluey color so i've got two materials and i'll select these windows and press assign when i've got this blue one selected assign and now when we go to rendered mode you can see with shift z you can see that they're windows so that's basically it for learning new tools to help you create this island. I'll just briefly go over other aspects 
of how I created the other objects that might be helpful to you. So the houses are nice and simple. I have joined them all together, but they're all just basic primitives. There's a cube and cubes, and they're actually sticking out slightly from the object. I didn't do a Boolean this time. And the main house is just a cube with a loop cut down the middle. And then I grabbed the top edge and pulled it upwards, as you can see there. Nice and simple. Each of my pipes, you can see that I've got the auto smooth selected so that they've got that angle there is nice and sharp and this is fairly flat. The trees are kind of quirky. They're just cubes added together, as you can probably make out there, just overlapping each other and then it's all joined together. I find it easier when I've joined stuff together just to move them around. These ones all have cylinders and I've just scaled one end and I've rotated them really slightly. If you want to make more complex trees then do look at my tutorial. I've got a card in the corner now and a link in the description for making more realistic but still low poly trees. The oil rig is fairly basic and it's just got different shapes all pasted together quite simply like this. This was a more complex shape to make but you can just start with a plane and create the outline or you can start with a cube and extrude one end fairly straightforward. The balloon is a sphere and then I've deleted a section and pulled it out and then I've just added some cylinders on the bottom there and a cube on the bottom for the basket. The windmills as you can see just a cube that's extruded to create a shape like that a cylinder there and a cylinder there and they're all added together and to make sure they went around the center point each of these blades I put the cursor in the center and rotated them round using the cursor tool down here 3d cursor pivot point I use the boolean operation there for the water the clouds are just icospheres pushed together and the last thing to talk about is the lighting you can see the colors I've used I followed a a specific palette of sort of pastel -y colors. If I click on the materials, you can see the base color here, and I've kept the color wheel in this sort of area, so they're nice and pastel -y, uh, which is not so saturated, which would be on the outside edge here. You might want really vivid colors, so go for the outside edge. The only time I've done vivid colors is on my balloon to make it stand out a bit more, so that's come out a bit more saturated. In order to get the colors on the balloon, I'll just quickly highlight that. I've selected a face loop and then assigned that color to it. So there's and press assign over the white. And I've got those variant of colors. So on the lighting, I've got three point lighting. So three lights, they're all pointed in a different direction around my object. I've chosen the sun lamps because they're nice and easy. So just press shift A, lamp, sun. And they've all got different colors if you look down here depends on your color palette to how you want that to look but I find it's helpful to have three-point lighting and they've got they're fairly low size so they've got quite crisp shadows crisp-ish as you can see there I find that helps it gives it a nice look but also I've got an HDRI so if I bring out another window and show you the node editor and go to the world tab you can see I've got an HDRI plugged in to the background remember that's an environment texture not an image texture and it's this one here because it's quite a nice yellowy palette that I wanted. I could have used one of these as well. Hopefully you'll remember that from the chess piece tutorial. And that gives it a nice soft tone and even lighting combined with the three point lighting, which is the lights going in three different directions, gives these shadows and depth. Okay, so that's how to make a low poly island or islands. Try out different scenes and get creative. I've also got courses on low poly trees, as I've said, and low poly animals. So you could have a go at those and place them into your scene. I recommend creating quite a few of these because you'll really develop your 3D skills and then you'll find it easier when you create more complex projects. Thanks for watching.